Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we'll be looking at and reflecting on some of the Psalms from the Bible, which were written as songs and can still be sung, but can also still be used as prayers. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy. And to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the Psalm has in the Dewey Reims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list Psalm numbers as they're given in the Dewey Reims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 24 in the Dewey Reims Bible, but Psalm 25 in the RSV. On to the end. A Psalm for David. Brief context for this Psalm. To thee, O Lord, have I lifted up my soul. In thee, O my God, I put my trust. Let me not be ashamed. Neither let my enemies laugh at me, for none of them that wait on thee shall be confounded. I have faith in God, so that trust should be rewarded rather than being used for ridicule by others. Let all them be confounded that act unjust things without cause. Some people just do bad things for no good reason, and they should be prevented from getting what they're after. Shew, O Lord, thy ways to me, and teach me thy paths. Direct me in thy truth, and teach me, for thou art God, my Savior, and on thee have I waited all the day long. We request that God will teach us, because his guidance is itself a blessing, and is always good for us, good enough, in fact, that it's worth paying close attention to, and going out of your way to obtain it. Remember, O Lord, thy bowels of compassion, and thy mercies that are from the beginning of the world. Bowels usually refers to emotions in Hebrew writings. In this case, emotions like kindness and affection, which are expressed in mercy. The sins of my youth and my ignorances do not remember. According to thy mercy, remember thou me, for thy goodness' sake, O Lord. We often sin due to being inexperienced or ignorant, rather than out of actual malice, and we ask that God won't hold that against us, instead paying attention to the sorts of people we've become. The Lord is sweet and righteous, therefore he will give a law to sinners in the way. He will guide the mild in judgment, he will teach the meek his ways. All the ways of the Lord are mercy and truth to them that seek after his covenant and his testimonies. If we honor and respect God and aren't too prideful to accept his help, God will give us guidance to help us through life and towards salvation. For thy name's sake, O Lord, thou wilt pardon my sin, for it is great. We don't deserve forgiveness because of anything that we've done, but because of his great goodness and generosity, God offers it. This also further shows why God is worthy of worship. Who is the man that feareth the Lord? He hath appointed him a law in the way he hath chosen. His soul shall dwell in good things, and his seed shall inherit the land. People who respect and revere God have good things ahead for themselves and their families. The Lord is a firmament to them that fear him and his covenant shall be made manifest to them. While firmament does mean the sky, it can also mean a support or a foundation, and that's what it seems to mean here, that God supports those who revere him. My eyes are ever towards the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the snare. I'm always paying attention to God, because he can save me from trouble. Look thou upon me, and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor, the troubles of my heart are multiplied, Deliver me from my necessities. Many people struggle with finding enough resources or money to survive and with having no one else to support them, but God can free people from every need they have. See my abjection and my labor, and forgive me all my sins. Consider my enemies, for they are multiplied, and have hated me with an unjust hatred. Keep thus my soul and deliver me. I shall not be ashamed, for I have hoped in thee. Because we place our hope in God, we can hope to be rescued into heaven, purified of all our sins, and freed from our enemies, who seem to be so numerous in this life. The innocent and the upright have adhered to me, because I have waited on thee. Good people tend to hang around me because of my faithfulness to God. Deliver Israel, O God, from all his tribulations. Please rescue us from trouble. This psalm is a mix of pleading and hope, recognizing that we still need to be saved from our problems and our enemies, and focusing heavily on that but not doubting that God can do it or wants to if the right conditions occur. It's a psalm of deep faith in the midst of difficulty. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.